Hi everyone, I'm here with Jesse Townsend. Jesse Townsend is our training director at Parkway Athletic Club, our South Club in Reno, Nevada. Thanks for being with us, Jesse. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to talk about something that's really interesting. And you are going to be starting TRT. And now you've got your dosage and all that. And um, so you're going to be taking 200 milligrams a week, right? Right. That's a healthy dosage. Um, and uh, we'll see your, your testosterone was really low though. What was it? Yeah, like 172 when we tested it. That's really low. That was your total. Did you find out what your free testosterone is? No, I don't know if that was in that report. I, I don't know if that was in that, that test or not, but I, I, they want me to follow up with, you know, my primary now too, and just kind of have some more things done is a recommendation. And I'm, I will, I'll do that too. Okay. So, um, I've been on TRT for pushing 10 years now, eight to 10 years, and I'm 61 now. And I'm just going to talk about, cause you and I talked about this before you got your consultations and everything. You got your consultations with Royal Medical. If you guys want to talk to Royal Medical, there's a, always a link in uh, the description and you want to call, you can talk to Dane and they have a phenomenal price. That is uh, you get $45 off like the first, well, well the first month is one ninety five, and then you get $45 off for the next five months, I think. So it's one fifty. that includes your uh, medications. It includes your blood work and your consultations, but, uh, you can use that promo code, but I also recommend that you talk to some other clinics. Get one that you're comfortable with, and I, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm going to talk about my philosophy, but you got to remember my philosophy is viewed through my own biases, my own body, and what's happened to me, where my testosterone was, and uh, where it is now. So, just tell us, uh, Jesse, how are you starting? Yeah, so what I'm going to start with is, so they kind of recommended um, for dosing. I did look in there, Steve, and they did say his recommendation in my in my little letter they sent me for, for you know, they said I could take it twice a week, um, half, a, half a milliliter um, and do it that way. Uh, they didn't say they didn't say like you know how many days like every three days or every four. Obviously, twice a week would be kind of if you're doing it like that. Um, and I think a lot of people would realize this in the number of having seven days a week. You know, it's kind of going to be a little bit odd on how you take it. You know, maybe you're doing you know every three days or every four days. You know, I guess something like that could work too. Um, but yeah, they said either twice a week or once. Um, I feel like even after what we've talked about. With that, I feel like there's a chance for uh, improvement in, in the way to do it, you know, and, and you know, I don't want to deviate from what they're prescribing to me um, by the dose or recommendation of what they're going to tell me to do by level. And I won't um, until I, you know, until they instruct me to based on my future labs and, and how my body is working out with it and how I feel too, you know, and, and that part included and how I perform physically. Um, but I think there, if, if like what we talked about, possibly doing it more often in smaller doses, um, you know, maybe a little more effective and efficient um, for a couple of reasons. Now, a little bit more time consuming, you know, maybe it's a little bit more, you, you know, you got to do it daily or, or possibly every other day is, is a method I think could be used. Um, but so I'm kind of tossed up, you know, I, I, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start and do the first one, as they say, just like the full, you know, one milliliter dose and which would be 200 milligrams of testosterone cypionate. And then, you know, see how that goes for that first week. I figure with that, it kind of gets into my system, you know, kind of kind of let it do what it does. And then from there, I might go and do like two a week to start and then, you know, maybe even go and, and possibly from that point, go into doing it, you know, daily in a smaller dose. And I know for me, and again, talk to um, different clinics. I definitely recommend talking to Royal. Uh, 
Royal Medical, but there's other clinics out there. And I've been listening to doctors, talking to doctors about this for many, many years. And they all have different opinions. Specialists have different opinions. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what my philosophy is. But again, it's based on me. This is not medical advice. Um, but everyone's body is going to respond differently. Yeah. First, you know, I only want the testosterone. I don't want, especially starting off, I don't want the AI, um, basically their estrogen blockers. I don't want anything else because you, a young man, 37 years old, you know, you're, you're probably on TRT the rest of your life now because yeah. you're doing everything healthy. There's something is off to make your testosterone that low. That's really low. If I wasn't taking any testosterone, my testosterone would probably be total T would probably be 275 maybe. And, um, that that's a, my free testosterone would be better, which yeah. is what's really important is the free testosterone. So I know how my body responds. I can get away with a hundred milligrams a week, which is half of what you're taking. Yeah. Now I've bumped up in the last 10 years. I've experimented with everything. I go get my own blood work. I go pay for it. And I'm just experimenting to see how different things, how my body responds to different things. I have never needed an estrogen blocker. That's good. Yeah. And, but why start with an estrogen blocker if you might not need it? Why take more medications that you might not need? That's my philosophy. Again, you need to talk to the clinics and, you know, they have a place where they're going to start based on their experience. So that's what worked for me. But if I bump my, um, my testosterone replacement up to maybe 180, and how do I know this? I've tested it. <laughs> that will jack my testosterone up to 1800. That's high. <laughs> That's <laughs> only 180 milligrams. You've been prescribed 200 milligrams. Yeah. So you don't know how your body, mind just boom, really <laughs> responds. Crazy. My free testosterone goes up 50 to 75% over the top range. Yeah. So it's like, it's way up there. Now I feel phenomenal, um, but I don't need it that high. So I don't take that much. You know, I did it for maybe three weeks, four weeks. And that's what happened to my testosterone. Now my estrogen was at the top range, which I like. Um, it wasn't too high. My uh, hemoglobin was normal at the high range. My hematocrit was normal at the high range. And I've been giving blood. And I did it like four times and it tanked my ferritin. Talk to my doctors. Go, oh, no more giving blood for me because it tanked my ferritin. I mean, my ferritin was ridiculously low. Everything else was okay, but I caught it in time to be able to do the right things to get my ferritin back up. So I think you're kind of starting the same way I did, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so um, when I talked to the the doctor and and had the you know tell the doctor appointment because that's how they do it with Royal. So um, you know talked with him and yeah, you know, he went through his whole deal. He, he went through you know the labs and talked kind of you know, one by one, you know, what, what, where I'm at and, um, small amount of information at that point, unless it was important and something he wanted me to do. He wanted me to give blood. Um, he, he said he recommended doing it, you know, at least every eight weeks, you know, once every eight weeks, which I think is as often as you can do it at some of these, uh, donation centers. So, um, yeah, that's, and he said, yeah, my hemoglobin, my RBC count, uh, super, super high. And he said, yeah, you want to, even before I, I, I take anything, he wanted me to get in and give blood if I could. 
um, just to kind of get that in a good place. But yeah, then I, then we talked about the uh, aroma, you know, um, anti-estrogens or the yeah, aromatized inhibitors. Yeah. Aromatized, right? yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, whatever those names are, right. We all don't need to know every single one of them, but, um, but yeah, so I said, you know, I wasn't really interested in, in doing that. And I, I said that to him. And at first, I think he had it at first, maybe in like a tablet form. And then like we talked about, he said, well, we can put it in, you know, the liquid too. And it doesn't have to be a tablet because the thing with tablets is I'm trying to stay away from, I mean, I don't even take aspirin or ibuprofen and things like that, you know, just because I know what it can do to my body and how it can be hard on, on things that I need to have last me a long time. And so if I want to be healthy and feel good. So I kind of said, no, I'd rather stay away from that. And um, he, he said, he said, that's, you know, I can choose to do that and, and, you know, but Again, in that, I got kind of confused because I also heard him the part where he said he could put it in the liquid. And then as I read my paperwork, you know, we'll find out if it's in that when I get it um, or not. But I, I don't think it will be. So, yeah, I'm starting the same way without that. Um, they also recommended some, some you know, uh, make sure you're, you're as a male that my natural male hormones as far as testosterone functions go um, are still kind of working some or working some extra so they give that they prescribe that clomiphene um, uh, medication too and i think that's one that you take based on the amount that i got and knowing that i have a two-month supply of of medicine coming is is what it is um i think that they you take that one like once every couple of weeks, maybe, or something like that is probably what it is. So I, I don't know that I'll take that one either. Honestly, I, I may just, you know, put it away and, and, and again, see how my labs come back. Like what you were saying, you know, if there's things that are, that are dipping estrogen or estrogen raising, you know, estradiol going up, um, maybe I consider having an inhibitor, you know, but got to see how your body reacts for sure. I agree with that. Right. And, I mean, I didn't, for me, you know, the first thing, oh, by the way, if you guys check that link out, the promo code is Vitality1 if you want to talk to Royal. But again, try to talk to some other physicians and your general practitioner. A lot of times general practitioners will really poo-poo this, but yeah, um, TRT is going to improve your health if yeah. you need it. So, um, you know, the aromatase inhibitors... I tried an oral one time that was many years ago and it was just three times a week and it trashed my liver enzymes pretty quickly. Did it? How do I know? I go test all this stuff. Is it going to yeah. do that to you? I don't know. Maybe not, but I didn't like how high it pushed up my liver enzymes when I yeah. got you know, the liver test. So now, if you get it in the oil, which is in the injection, which is how I recommend, I've tried the cream, I've tried everything, it's probably not going to affect your liver like that. Right. Uh, just like, you know, in injectable testosterone, it, 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 if anything, it in, it's improved my liver health, you know, right. which people go, oh, how's it do that? Well, you're getting healthier in every way. You're putting on lean body mass, muscle, you're losing body fat, that's going to improve your health in every aspect. Yeah. Think about it. You know, if you get leaner and, and your body composition improves, your health is going to improve in just about every area. So I think that's why it's a, it's been a positive for my liver enzymes. As long as I don't take oral medications, which I, I try to avoid ibuprofen and stuff like that i gotta be in a lot of pain which is yeah maybe if i injure my back or something so um that's how i do it if you guys have questions for me or for jesse he hasn't started yet but we're going to be doing a series here and keep you all posted on how this is working for him and what it's doing for him how he feels and it takes some time sometimes a month or two to get it right um, so if you guys have questions for us, put them in the comment section and, uh, we'll be happy to tell you what we're doing or what we think is working or what other doctors have said to us. So any last thoughts, Jesse? 
No, I just think that as as I kind of listen to you talk through all these parts and, and we go back and forth, like the one of the biggest, most important things to recognize and stuff like this is the resources, you know, that are out there and what's available now, especially, you know, pretty easily. You know, I think some people think, and I know this because for a living for a long time now and, and you know, for what I like to do is genuine passion. I help people daily and I meet with new people every day that want to be fit, that want to get healthier, that, you know, want to do all these things. But when I start to talk to them about, you know, what they are, what they are doing now, what they have been doing. And I realize on average, you know, most people aren't using resources and, and health tools and things that are out there and available. The main reasons you get is time, uh, maybe money, you know, whatever it may be. But like what we're talking about, even with this, you know, getting the lab work done and, and working with Royal. So maybe your, your idea is to not work with a company yet to, to get you on the right path, which I would recommend if, if again, if financially it makes sense, but maybe it is just making sure you do, you know, I, these labs and these things for yourself and do them early on, you know, in age, if you can, and that's the stuff that I'm learning even myself. And, you know, don't just think that because you feel good and because, I mean, that's think positively, of course, don't think there's something wrong unless there is, but know what's going on with your body and, and have these things checked and not as a scare tactic and, and or something, you know, to bring, you know, into your life more negativity, but know what you're doing. So, you know, what you're up against and, you know, you know, every few years, how your body has changed, you know, what has happened and more info. If you're really wanting to be healthy and you're wanting to take care of yourself and have good quality of life as you age, more info, kind of the better, you know. Um, so use the resources and, and you know, get out there and and get yourself people for, for these things that you can deal with and be consistent with these habits. It takes more than just sometimes the food eating and the workout stuff. Absolutely. And you guys hear me say this all the time. Don't be lazy. Do your own research. You can always listen to my opinion, but you don't just go on what I say or what Jesse says or what anybody says. Even your doctors do your own research. And yeah. YouTube is a great place to get a lot of information. Just search TRT and you'll get a lot of really good content on this topic. So make sure you think for yourself. Make sure you're taking your own health uh, responsibly and take responsibility for it. So uh, Jesse, keep us posted and thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you.